Hey guys, um, so this video is a little bit different today, but it's been something that's been crossing my mind recently. Um, maybe because it's Mercury retrograde, I don't know, but I just wanted to share my story about being a domestic abuse survivor and how it led me to my spiritual awakening. So, let's start at the beginning with this. So, back in 2009, I met, well, one of my exes. That was, like, the second longest relationship I've had. The one I'm in now is my longest relationship. Um, but basically, what happened was, um, when I met him... I wasn't actually that interested in him in all honesty. Um, how we met was what was this untangled? Um, we met on plenty of fish. Um, I was trying to get over a breakup, you know, and genuinely I wasn't really looking for anything serious at the time. I was just kind of trying to pass the time and just quench my loneliness a little bit in all honesty and you know I remember he he added me and just, well not added me but he messaged me and at first I didn't really respond because I mean he was in Liverpool for a start you know and I'm from Manchester so I, was, I just thought oh this isn't going to go anywhere you know and I messaged him a couple of times back and forth and he seemed nice you know and he was like oh can I add you on MSN Messenger do you remember when that was the thing? And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. So I gave him um, my MSM uh, username. And we, you know, we were talking sort of, you know. It started out as like once a day, just like, oh, hi, how are you kind of thing. Um, and then progressively it became more and more and... Like, honestly, I just, I was never really attracted to him at all. You know, I was just like, he seems nice. He's into music, you know. Maybe he'd be good to have as, as, a, uh, to have as a friend. And, I mean, it was like 2009. Like, I can't remember all of the details. It's a little bit hazy. And to be honest, I've blocked a lot of it out. But, um... He got very attached very quickly, you know. And back then, I mean, I was like 20, 21. And I was like that myself. So I didn't really see it as a problem so much at first. I thought, oh, you know, this guy's interested in me. He checks in on me every day. It's nice, this sort of thing. Um, And then he asked for my, my phone number. um, But he said, could he have my house phone number? Because he never has credit on his phone and I was like okay you know not thinking he was going to ring me but you know he would ring me every day and it would be like a morning and evening thing and we agreed to meet up so he he came to Manchester to meet with me and he was just really awkward like he used to wear like this coat that was like long enough to be a sleeping bag and these jeans I mean he had these jeans the entirety of our relationship and I mean we were together like three and a half years but he'd already had them for like three years when we met and but I mean they were just like holy and they were just the fit was really weird um and he was just really awkward you know and I don't want people to think that I'm being, like, mean to be mean. Like, I'm I'm trying to be honest here and you will find out that this guy absolutely deserves everything I'm saying anyway. But, I mean, at the time, I was, like, thin. Like, I had an eating disorder, so I was thin, you know. And he was a big guy, you know, and that that didn't I wasn't that bothered about that but it was just you know because I'd been with bigger guys before but they always took care of their appearance you know they, they were well groomed and they wore clothes that were appropriate for 
their frame and things like that you know with him it was like he made himself look bigger in some ways I don't know whether if it was like a power thing I don't know but yeah he just he was really awkward he barely spoke to me the entire time we were there it was very awkward you know and I kind of I said to him I said listen you know I will you know I'm I'm gonna be honest like I'll break your heart you know I just I just don't feel I just don't feel that way and you know I'll break your heart or you'll break my heart it's just not gonna work you know and I could sense I could sense even then it would never it would never work and I really feel like at that point before I understood obviously about gut instinct and things like that I realised now my gut was like stay away from this person because this shit ain't right and I mean like we barely spoke when he met with me and I mean I was (laughs) sometimes I think back to myself and I think if I had been nicer to him would he have treated me differently but then other things transpired over time to show me that that wasn't the case but I actually shook his hand on this occasion and I said it's nice to meet you and the look of despair on his face it's just I still feel really bad about that I I don't know why like I I wasn't feeling it I was being honest you know been a little counter about it but I was 20 like most 20 year olds are assholes you know um so anyway like he became really attached to me after this and he was like he told me he loved me at this point and we'd only met once and I wasn't very nice to him and I was just like I was struggling to kind of wrap my head around why you know but it not so long after that you know I mean we would talk every day and like it was a little bit like full on but it wasn't like at this point at the point where any real red flags were being raised um and then like I went I think it's like a couple of weeks after that I went to Liverpool to meet with him um and like we went to McDonald's and my food was on the table and I was like I'm just going to the toilet and I came back and there was people sat at the table with him and my food was gone and I was like oh is this your family and he's like no I don't know them I was like so you've let strangers sit at our table and my food is gone right okay this is a bit bit weird and then it was just, it was always just so awkward and uncomfortable. Like every time we met, it was so uncomfortable. And I'm just like, it's really cringy thinking about it. And like we were stood near the docks and it's like, oh, I'll push you in sort of thing. But, you know, at the time I just thought, oh, he's really nervous. He's trying to make a joke, you know. I didn't really think too deeply on it at the time, you know, but I, immediately to him I was like listen I'm not interested in a relationship with you right now you know I was nice but I didn't say oh I'm not attracted to you or anything even though I wasn't I just I wasn't in a good headspace I really wasn't in a good headspace at all you know and I just at that point I don't think I know what I wanted I was just trying to get over the pain I was just trying to focus on uni and my job and things like that and you know like I'd get messages from him like he'd ring me every day and I was like I didn't mind you know it was weird like in person he didn't really have much to talk about he would never talk to me but like over the phone he would it was just but you know it it didn't make sense to me because he would say over the phone oh I've got a gay voice you know I sound gay but like Oh, on the phone, he would just, he was really talkative and in person he wasn't. He was just, he was very, it was, it was just strange to me. Um, and I remember he sent me this message and he's like, oh, I love you. He's like, I don't know why you don't love me. I would give anything to you. I just want to save you. I just want to, 
I want to fix you and all this stuff. That's a fucking red flag right there. Um, And he wrote me a song, you know, and he played it to me down the phone. And obviously, if someone writes you a song, like, it's going to affect you emotionally. You know, and obviously, I started crying and I was just like, oh, well, maybe, you know, maybe he deserves a chance. You know, I was like, I was... I thought I was warming up to it, but I realised that I was being groomed to be in that relationship. Because looking back, if he had just been normal, I don't think I would have been in a relationship with him. He kind of, like, manipulated me into being with him. Because he was, like, saying, no one would ever love you the way that I do. No one would ever care for you the way I do. So I realised now that I was being, being manipulated basically he was taking advantage of the fact that I was hurting from somebody else and took advantage of that you know he got to know me really well what I liked and what I didn't like to use that to manipulate me and I remember I went out for my 21st birthday with my friend and my ex's friend actually you know gave me a lift home um And, you know, I was just, I was 21, I was just dancing on people, you know, I was living my life and there was this guy that, you know, I kissed in a club, you know, and it was so weird, it was literally like he knew when that happened because he texted me and he was like, "I'm I'm outside crying in the rain, kneeling in the rain because I know you're with somebody else and I wish you would be with me and I was like, what the fuck is this shit and I mean I was drunk and I was just like living my life and my ex's friend came to pick me up and took me home you know and I kissed him too I mean I was 21 you know it's not like I was sleeping with him I was just kissing him it was my birthday I was happy you know and when I got home and I mean it was about four in the morning he rang me and he was just like crying down the phone and was just like what even is this shit and he wore me down and he wore me down and he'd ring me every day and he'd be crying and telling me he loves me and you know I was just like he wore me down and I was like well if this guy really loves me maybe I should give him a chance because it could be the best thing that's ever happened to me even though I wasn't physically attracted to him at all um he was a bit full on but I thought you know what I'm full on sometimes so fuck it I'll I'll do it you know I'll give it a try so um a couple of weeks later it was like you know it's actually really funny because if, if I remember correctly like our anniversary is my current boyfriend's birthday so it's a little bit awkward and funny um is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I was getting myself confused then. Um, so I went to Liverpool, went to his house. Uh, he met me, we got on the bus, went to his house. Um, he played me the song that he wrote for me. One thing led to another. Um, at that point, um, on an like a month or so before I was on a night out with my friend and I'd started like having a few fits every now and then but I personally feel like it was related to the fact that I was really stressed out and I'd like I'd had an eating disorder and it was like there was points where I just wasn't eating at all and like I had a little bit of one after we finished doing whatever um and I could tell that he like he didn't really believe me and he was just like, what is this? But he called me like literally within minutes of saying, oh, you know, should we give it a go? Kind of thing. Because I remember like I had myself as, like on Facebook as being married to him, but it was like a, in like a jokey way, like just in a friendship way. Um, like within minutes of like saying okay let's boyfriend and girlfriend then he called me by his ex's name that he was still in love with bear in mind he was still in love with her 
and he told me that all along and it's like okay well this is confusing he literally called me her name just after we finished having sex and literally within maybe an hour of that I was on Facebook and he told me to delete pictures of any guy friends that I have on there like if I'm tagged in pictures of them to delete them to delete any guy friends to block them no longer speak to them um within about an hour and you know I wanted to please him at the time so I was like okay yeah sure whatever you know it doesn't really bother me anyway sort of thing um but you know I asked him to delete the picture of him and his ex and I can't remember what he said at the time but he made some kind of excuse because it was still his profile picture at the time yeah um I will go back onto the story in a minute, but I remember after we'd broken up, like a couple of his friends stayed in contact with me to check that I was okay, you know, because obviously they knew more about the situation than what was portrayed to most people. And one of them said to me, because I said to him, I said, I always felt like I was a rebound for Amy, his ex, and that he never really cared about me and he said you know what to be honest he said this is you know a few of us kind of share those thoughts um so that was like an interesting tidbit but I mean his his family were really nice and everything but like sometimes people think oh you know people who are abusers they come from a background of that not all the time because his parents were literally like the nicest people in the world maybe that's what it was maybe it was spoiled I don't know but they never showed anything to me that would make me think oh maybe that's why he is the way that he is although I did try to talk about his mum you know tried to talk to his mum about it once and she just kind of you know glossed over it so because he had a history of doing it but you know things were fine for a couple of months I mean there's like things like that about the deleting the stuff thing but like I understood at the time because I mean I wouldn't really want to see that you know so I kind of understood it um but there was like there was I mean there was like a lot of little things but then there were like really blatantly obvious things now that I think about it um kind of the next big one was he invited me to his house um with his friend and his friend's girlfriend and I was like oh yeah sure happy to meet them uh you know this was like the first time I was really meeting any of his friends And he made fruit cocktail, but I mean, like, the amount of vodka he put into fruit juice, I was, he knew what I was doing, he was doing, because I was, like, drunk very quickly. I fell asleep on the bathroom floor, his friend's girlfriend had to come pick me up off the bathroom floor, put me into the bed. And instead of leaving me to rest in the room, they were all sat in there, just talking and being loud. And his mum was like, why don't you go downstairs and just leave her to sleep it off, like what are you doing so they did that and then I was sort of in and out of sleep and he came up sometime later with a pizza and he was like you need to eat this you need to eat this it'll help you feel better and I was like no I don't want to eat because I'm going to be sick so just leave me alone and he made me like eat a slice of pizza and I was like okay fine I'll eat it and then I'll go back to sleep and then he came up sometime early hours of the morning I mean I think it was like February or March um and he was like flopping all over the bed and I was like listen please please do not like jump on me or near my stomach because I am going to throw up and no word of a lie he then presses really hard on my stomach with his hand and his elbow and I projectile vomited everywhere 
It went all over the wall, all over the bed, and then I got up, I was spewing on the floor, I slipped in it, and then I ran to the bathroom, and I threw up all over there, and I was like cleaning myself, scrubbing the bathroom, and I was saying, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, Um, and then I go back in the bedroom, and he's just sat there, and he's just looking at me with disgust, and he's like, you're not allowed to sleep in here tonight you can go sleep outside in the garden and I was like sort of laughing I was like what like are you you joking and he's like no I'm not and he marches me downstairs into the garden I was like well can I at least have a blanket or something a pillow and they had like lounge chairs in the garden so I was just sat on this lounge chair for a while and I was just like please kind of you know at least let me sleep in the living room like it, it's February it's cold and he was like no no it's not happening and I think I must have been pleading with him for over an hour and eventually he let me sleep on one of the couches in the living room and luckily there was a blanket next to the couch so I just put that over myself and um just just went to sleep and his mum in the morning woke up and she's like are you okay and like and I was like oh yeah sorry I was just a little bit sick last night um so I slept down here because it was cooler and I was like, oh, you know, I cleaned it up in the bathroom. I'm really sorry. And she's like, oh, don't be sorry. It's not your fault. Don't worry. Kind of thing. And then I go into the bedroom in the morning and he's refusing to speak to me. Um, and like when he got up, he was just like, you need to scrub everywhere in here, which is fair enough. I thought at the time, oh, he just, just really doesn't like sick. And he's just overreacted a bit because he's drunk, but he'll be fine in the morning. Um, so I cleaned it up, um, and I can't really remember what happened next, but he used to have, like, this habit of, like, every time we'd have an argument, he'd tell me that it was over, but I couldn't leave his house. I had to stay in his bedroom, I wasn't allowed to go downstairs, or anything, I had to stay there. And it would happen a lot, I mean, a lot, every time we had an argument, and it was never my fault. You know, it was always something that he'd done, but he would blame me for. And there was one time I wrote him a letter just trying to explain how I feel, and he ripped it up in front of me, and he said, I'm not reading that shit. And I was just like, okay. And, like, of course, when you're in that situation, you know, at first it wasn't physical. It was mental and emotional. When you're in that situation, like, you crave their attention so much, like, you want them to be nice to you so much that, you know, you kind of develop this need for them. It's it's really twisted. It is really twisted, and, you know, unfortunately, it's impacted every single relationship I've had since. It still impacts my relationship with my partner now because I get triggered by certain things. Um... I'm just trying to give like the worst examples because I don't want to sit here for hours like saying every little thing that happened um there was like one occasion where I mean like this is how I knew something was wrong because this is a guy who would like even if he was out he would ring me two or three times to see what I was doing to see where I was um and there was one occasion where I literally didn't hear from him for hours and hours and hours and like until the next day and that was not like him at all and I was really panicking um and it turned out that he'd actually gone to visit his ex which I only found out after we split up but it made complete sense and he was allowed to do those things but I wasn't allowed to um you know just disappear so to speak 
Um, you know, there's things like he would constantly listen to the song by Damien Rice called Amy. Um, and like put it on his M- when on MSN, you used to be able to show what music you're playing and it would be constantly. And it's like, but you're supposed to be in a relationship with me. So why are you doing that? Like it was just complete manipulation tactics all the time. Um, and there was like, there was a lot of things over three and a half years, you know, he moved himself in with me. Um, I was living in a student chair house at first and like I left because they were partying all the time, you know, I had a part-time job I'd have to get up at five in the morning for and I was just like, I'm never going to get any sleep. I'm never going to get anything done. So I'll just move into my own flat, you know, bear in mind, I moved away from my family and my friends to be with this guy he essentially cut me off from all my family and friends and so I moved into this flat you know and he just moved himself in and I was just like okay I didn't really want you to live here like I was staying at his mum's house until I moved into the student share house with him and I was just like I just wanted a bit of independence just wanted to live on my own like I mean he could visit yeah but I just didn't want him to live with me um and he just moved himself in and you know it was just I was like well I suppose I'm okay with it I mean we've lived together before but you know it was at his parents house but then I thought you know what actually I have a bit more control here because I'm the one who pays the rent I'm the one who's working he didn't work he never had a job the entire time we were together. All he would do is just smoke weed and um, play in the PlayStation. That's all he would do. He never had a job in the entire time we were together. Um, he had a job just before we got together, but then he somehow lost it. Um, and so, like, I was paying for everything anyway. Um And there was one time, I can't even remember honestly what we argued about, but I just remember that he said he was going to his mum's and he wasn't going to come back. And honestly, I felt so relieved. Like, really relieved because I was like, I can go back to Manchester, I can, you know, I can get a job there, I can start my life again, I'm free. You know, I'm free from all of this, I'm free from all this bullshit. And then I woke up in the middle of the night and he is standing over me just watching me sleep with his really weird smile on his face. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And I was just like, he got into bed next to me and I'm just like, I was literally like, I was just wide awake and I'm like, what the fuck do I do? What do I do? Like, uh, I was just, oh, it just made my skin crawl. I was just like, what the fuck do I do? Seriously. Um, it's just, I didn't, I didn't know what, what to do. I just kind of like pretended it didn't happen because I was not very good at that point in my, in my life of like confrontation. And he was so manipulative that it would still always end up my fault, even if he did something wrong. Oh yeah, um, I remember something that happened before that. So when I was living in the student share house, um, when I was looking to move out, like I actually made friends with some girls at uni, and like they said, oh you know we've got a spare room, come live with us. You know we're really quiet. You know we don't party things like that. They were really nice girls. I'm still friends with two of them now actually, um, and. There was a quiz night that was going on at the pub local to where I lived. And so my ex went with his friends um, and I went with my friends. And because we were girls, because we were all very bright and because we won the quiz, he accused us of cheating, saying that we can't be that smart, that we were loud and embarrassing and he was done with me. And it literally three days of silence from him like I would call him he'd answer the phone but he would not speak to me or he'd tell me 
that I was loud, I was embarrassing, I was obnoxious and all this stuff. And I had three days of this absolute bull crap. And I remember at the time I had a job working in an office around the same time as doing that. And like me and his ex, like because he told me all this stuff about her, like I'd had a go at her and told her to leave him alone and all this stuff. And, you know, it, it blew up in a big way. I actually, I remember I messaged her at the time and I said, hey, look, I know we've kind of, we've had our differences in the past, but I just wanted to ask you something. And I said, has he ever been, was he ever abusive or violent towards you in any way? And literally within 10 minutes, she messaged me and she said, yeah, she's like, can you give me a ring when, you know, when you're on your lunch hour or whatever? And I was like, yeah, okay, sure, yeah, I'll call you. And she was like, hi. She was like, listen, first of all, you know, I was trying to, like, warn you, you know, because she did actually warn me and, you know, I was you know, people are very good at saying that their exes are crazy and sometimes they're the crazy ones, um, and she's like, I was trying to warn you, she's like, he manipulated me throughout that entire relationship, she was actually, like, fairly young, I mean, she was, like, she just turned 16, and he was, like, 20, 21, um, well, they were together for, like, well, like, two years, like a year or two years something like that no 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 it was about a year so she was 16 when they got together they'd been talking since she was like 14 or 15 something like that um and like honestly I always felt like I was replacing her like I always felt like he loved her more than he loved me because the pictures they had together the way he would talk about her and stuff like that um but she said, yeah, like, he was violent towards her. He was abusive. Because he told me there was, like, a couple of occasions where um, she pushed him into a door and she threw herself down the stairs. Um, and things like that. And it, I think it was around this point he actually pushed me into a door. And, like, I really hurt my back on the, the handle. And, like, I think that there was, like, there was that and there was some other thing. Because, obviously, of the way he'd been with me for three days, I was, like, something is just not right about this situation. Like, this behaviour isn't normal. You know, we had a good, you know, we had a long conversation. She told me everything that happened, you know, and she said it actually led to her that combined with, her granddad passing away, her trying to take her own life. And she did call him at the time, you know, and he, he heard it, you know. So I understand that was probably distressing for him, but he, you know, he was abusive to her, you know. She was a young girl and he manipulated her a lot. And, um, you know... I still, you know, some of what she's saying I could, like, resonate with because it had happened to me. Some of it, I don't know, maybe she exaggerated. I don't know, you know, like, he made it seem like she was crazy, you know. She she did cheat on him. She admitted that. Um, but she said it was because of the way he was treating her. And, you know not really the right thing to do but I understand she was a young girl it's just like one of her first relationships like I felt really bad for her in the end um but then it was around this time and obviously learning the information that I learned that I just like he was it was weird because like he'd not been speaking to me for three days and then he decided that he wanted to speak to me and then I stopped speaking to him for two days because obviously I found out what I found out and I was like I don't think I can continue with this. I really don't think I can. And of course he manipulated his way back in. He was nice to me for a couple of weeks. Really went out of his way. And then once he felt comfortable again, the abuse started up once more. Um, I'm trying to think. 
like there was a lot of us like trying to pinpoint like the, the the main the main kind of things but there's like there was I think an occasion um that the timelines were all blurred because I really just I've tried to push so much out of my mind but we were at his friend's house once for a party and there was only one seat available in the kitchen and he sat on the chair he wouldn't let me sit on his knee he told me to sit on the floor near the dog bed and I was like well can I not sit on your knee and he's like no you're too heavy the chair will break and I was like right okay um and his friend's girlfriend come in and he gets up immediately and lets her sit down on the chair and I was just like I went you just let your friend's girlfriend sit on the chair and you won't let your own girlfriend sit on the chair. Like, what is wrong with you? And he was very good at painting this picture of himself as being the innocent victim, you know, and he could never hurt anybody and all, and everybody's hurt him and all this shite. Um... I mean, I moved my whole life to be with him, you know. I moved 30, 40 miles away from where I lived to be with him. I cut off my family, my friends, everything for him. Um, and he used to say things like, shut your fat face all the time. And he used to spit at me. Um, if he didn't like something I said or did, he used to spit at me. Uh, mm. Um, sorry. Yeah, he used to spit at me um, and say, shut your fat face. And at that point, I was not fat. I am now because I've had a baby, but, but like, I wasn't then. Um, <sighs> there's just, there's just, just so many things and like he only got physical really with me once but I started a job like I left a uni like I couldn't even finish uni like he wouldn't let me he was just so like jealous and you know because he moved in with me I had to financially support us both and I couldn't do that at uni so I had to get a job a full-time job which I did working at Santander and I met a guy there, you know, he was a nice guy, like he started out with friends but then, <clears throat> excuse me, I started to catch feelings and I was like, I can't, you know, I need to finish this relationship, it's not right, I can't continue like this Um, and I did and then like within an hour because I don't know what it was, like I can't remember what he said but he said something and it was just like, it made me feel like no, I can't leave, I need to stay. And I was like, I said, oh, um, oh, I was only joking, sort of thing. I think I was just, I was scared. Because he, he told me that no one would ever want me apart from him. That's the way he made me feel. But he would never, like, sexually, he would never, like, go down on me or anything. Because, I don't want to repeat it, but he was disrespectful anyway. Um, But I had to do it to him. And, like, I'd say after about a year and a half, we stopped having sex. Because I was just, like, repulsed by him. Like, not just physically, like, just who he was as a person just repulsive but like his hygiene and everything was really poor like he had long hair which is fine I don't really care but like I had to tell him to brush his teeth and like whenever he'd have a bath he'd be sat in the bath for ages but he'd still stink of sweat he'd always have dirt under his fingernails every time even when he had a bath and it's just like it used to like I got put off having baths for a long time because every time he'd get in the bath literally just stuff would just come off him and it's like where the fuck were you hiding that like it just ugh no it just repulsed me but like I couldn't even do things like like 
listen, me and my partner now, we, we, we fart, right? It doesn't matter, we fucking, we laugh about it. I was not allowed to fart or burp near him. And if I did, he'd go absolutely fucking mental. He'd always say to me every morning, my breath stinks, I stink, I need a bath. Um, you know, it was mainly the fat thing, but then he'd feed me, like, he'd just, he would never eat normal meals, oh, I don't like that, I don't like that, you know, it would always just be pizza, or just something bad, like, junk food, it would just be bad stuff, it would never be anything good, um, he used to like play on my phone at night and like not even ask and then I'd wake up and he's like oh I'm just playing a game on your phone I realised now though he was going through my messages and things like that I really need to get my brows done oh my god um and there was one time like he was trying to go through my phone and I remember I just grabbed him by the hair and I ripped a chunk of his hair out and I can't remember if he was, like, violent to me in return, but I just had enough of him. Like, he was constantly invading my privacy, like, going through my phone. And it's just like, why? You know, when obviously this this guy that I was working with, you know, I told him, obviously, that I liked him and he turned me down. And that's fair enough. Nothing ever happened. I didn't pursue anything. But I was confused because I just, I was trapped in a situation I felt like I could not get out of. And then we moved from there to somewhere else. Again, he paid nothing towards rent, nothing towards food. Um, Like the first place we moved after that, it was like a studio flat. So like the bedroom was separated by a curtain. It just... Um, so I'd hear like if he was on the PlayStation all night and uh, what's it called so I'd be going to work I actually got in over 10 grand of debt because he didn't work and I had to support us and he did nothing to help me like the job centre kind of put him on these like job courses and he actually got offered a job which was like working I think it's like Iceland and it was like 19 hours a week and he was like no I'm just gonna stay on the door because I'll get more money he's just this really fucking work shy um I just I did everything like absolutely everything and you know I was still like willing to try at this point to make it work like I really was and I was just like I wondered to myself why um like we weren't sexual with with each other or anything but it's mainly because he fucking repulsed me but still I wanted to try and then we moved into a bigger flat downstairs and like this is where it started to get really bad um so, like, at this point, you know, I wanted more independence. I wanted to go back to university. I wanted to go back to university in Manchester because I was like, I miss home. I just, I want to go home and, you know, it's only a few days a week. And he locked me in the flat and he hit the keys and he would not let me leave. And he's in the bedroom and he's just, like, struggling. Please don't leave me. Oh, you can't leave me. And I was like, oh, my God. Why won't you just let me have independence? Please just let me better my life. Please just let me better my life. And it turned into a big argument and I said, listen, I'm sorry, but I'm going. Like, I've decided this. You know, this is what I want to do. And he... Every time he was angry, he would do this, like, weird thing with his ears. Like, he'd scratch his ears and pull at his hair and he was doing that and I was just like oh my god I was like I was like where are the fucking keys just please just tell me where the keys are 
Um, and he wouldn't tell me, but eventually I found him and I let myself out and I went to sit on the step outside the front door and the guy from upstairs comes down and he's like, hey, he's like, are, you, are you okay? And before I could finish speaking, my ex comes out. Um, you know, obviously because he's seen that somebody else was there going, oh, are you okay, baby, coming back inside? And I was like, but obviously, the, I mean, the guy, you know, that lived, who lived upstairs, we exchanged looks and, like, he could tell that, you know, I wasn't okay and, you know, I knew that he was, like, trying to say, don't worry, you know. Um, so, yeah, it escalated into a huge argument where... He started snapping all my DVDs. He snapped my hairbrush. He literally picked up the couch and threw it across the room. He ripped the radiator off the wall. And he got right in my face. And I was just fed up with him. And I said, you're going to fucking hit me. Just hit me. Just get it over and done with. And he grabbed me by the throat. And he started to squeeze. And, I mean, I was a little bit shocked. Because, you know what, I didn't. I knew he was capable of it, but I didn't know he was going to do it. So then I locked myself in the bathroom and he was just like weirdly pacing up and down outside the door. And I was like, I need to fucking leave. I need to get out of here. I need to leave this relationship, but I don't know how. Um, and he was just... I don't have any words for that man that are appropriate to describe how awful he is. Um, I didn't realise at the time that I was being abused, that I was, it was domestic abuse. I didn't realise that at the time. In hindsight, you do. But um, what happened next was a friend that I actually used to work with in Liverpool, she messaged me and she's like, listen, I've got a job in Manchester why don't you come and live with me? Come and move with me. You, you'll you easily get a job there. Come and live with me. You know, you'll get out of this situation. Because she knew what I was going through. Um. So, I did. I got a job in Manchester. Um, most of the time, she'd give me a lift. If it was on an awkward shift, I'd get a train. And I was working initially, like... I was out of the house 14 hours a day. And I'd come home and nothing would be done. And he would be up on the PlayStation all night until five in the morning. And then I'm up at six. Um, And it was only like that for about a month or so because then we found a flat. And I moved in with her and I didn't look back. Um, He'd always like... I don't know what it was that helped me find my strength. Whether it was this friend or if it was like just being at a distance from him being in Manchester, I was really surprised. Actually, no, it wasn't the only thing that set him off. It was when I said that I was moving back to Manchester that set him off. And I remember, because it, we went to a Halloween party at his cousin's, and I was sat with him on his knee, and I just said, listen, I'm moving back to Manchester. I know you don't want to move with me, so I'm going. If we work, we work. If we don't, we don't. And I do give credit. We're not friends now, but I give credit to her for getting me out of that situation. You know, I really, really do. And so I ended up moving in with her. It was really good to be close to my family and friends again. And my sister, around that time, she left a relationship, so she was staying with me. And it was just nice to, like be around people who were there for me to give me strength I didn't feel on my own I really didn't feel on my own I don't know what it was that finally gave me the strength to leave and not change my mind but I did um and like the final six months of our relationship I think I saw him maybe three four times at most um 
But I always knew, I always knew when we got together, our relationship would only last three and a half years. And I always knew that. And like, really, I was becoming spiritual when we met, but he was such an atheist. Like he shut down any kind of things like that. And his mum used to say to him, I don't know why you've been like that. You used to believe in ghosts. And that you could see the future and stuff, so... Like, he just completely shut it down. Um, but it's like, while I was in Liverpool, like, any kind of spiritual stuff was completely shut off. Um, and then when I moved back to Manchester, like, it awoke something in me. Like, because of the trauma I'd been through, it awoke something in me. You know, I remember, like, one of the places I worked at before I decided to, you know, move back to Manchester... I would ring him every day, you know, and my colleague who sat next to me and he was the guy. He would just be abusive to me and horrible. It's like, what? What do you want? You know, just like really horrible to me and I'd be nice to him and he'd just be really fucking mean. And he said to me, he was like, listen, he's like, I've heard your conversations. He should not be treating you like that. Why are you putting up with it? And I said, honestly, I'm just waiting to go back to uni so I can leave. Like, I try. I really try with him. And he just... Nothing I ever do is good enough. He can find fault in anything. You know, he just... He tells me he doesn't even like me anymore. So I don't even know what... What he's doing. Like, I literally... I don't know. And it's just, like, the last six months, like... It was just constantly arguing on Facebook. You know, and I remember once I said to him... I said, say that again and I'll leave. I'll just, I'll end it. I was like, I'm not bothered. I'll end the relationship. Then he didn't say it because he knew that I meant it. You know, and it was... When I moved back home, he realised that he was starting to lose power over me. And that's when he really started trying. And by that, blah, blah, blah. by then it was too late. I didn't love him anymore. I don't know if I ever really did. I just feel like I was manipulated into a situation where I believed that I was because of the way he treated me. You know, I believed that was love. And then I realised, obviously, that isn't at all and unfortunately it does still really affect me but it kind of led to me having a kind of a breakdown I used to start having panic attacks a lot and I would start seeing things and hearing things and having like prophetic dreams and things like that and I just thought that honestly I was losing the plot I thought I was losing the plot that I was having some kind of episode and it was when like, me and my sister moved into a place together near where we grew up. Because me and this, like, this friend just got a boyfriend and she wanted me to move out so a boyfriend could move in. And, yeah, um, so I ended up living with my sister. And it's, like, around this time, after everything I went through, um, we, I was still with him at this point, but it was, like, because I was far enough away from him, like you know, my guides and stuff started making themselves known and, you know, I remember, I remember specifically at that point praying to get the strength to leave him once and for all, to leave that relationship because I didn't want to be in it. I just, I didn't, it was just, it was, it was dead, you know, there was just nothing there. There was nothing that wanted me to, like, there was nothing there to be saved, to be salvaged. And, you know, me and my sister started going on a lot of long walks, you know, and we were kind of, like, coming into spirituality together because I remember that my mum took us to this spiritual shop and she was like, oh, you know, you can get one thing each, what you want. Because my mum's always, like, been into spirituality and things like that and... My sister picked this this pendulum. I can't remember what crystal... I think it was amethyst or rose quartz. And I picked the tarot deck. And, like... We... 
we were like learning together we were developing our skills together and it was nice you know but you know I would start like seeing shadows and things and I just had this image of like the house that we lived in at the time like the, the man hanging at the bottom of the stairs and I found out afterwards that that actually happened so I was kind of a bit freaked out by that but you know when I'd started doing spells and things around that time also because where we were living we were right near the woods and I just feel like the whole experience kind of triggered that off for me you know because they often say traumatic situations trigger it off and I feel like so much of my natural self was repressed in that relationship I still struggle now sometimes to talk to my partner about certain things because I'm worried about how he's going to react because of the situations I found myself in in the past you know um but it it awoke something in me you know and it made me realize that my calling in life is to help other people you know and any way I can you know he was actually very close-minded to be honest about a lot of things um, I do think he's a sociopath, I think he's a narcissist, um, he, you know, like I remember he used to just lie about certain things, like he told me that the band he was in, that they were really well known in his area, they weren't, um, and like they entered a battle of the bands, which had like the, one of the I think it was the singer and the guitarist from the Zootons were judging and they didn't even like make it into third place and he was like this is bullshit this is bullshit we're more talented than half of these bands here and like a lot of these bands like were already like fairly well known and they had like one blurb written about them in a magazine that was just it wasn't even that good and he told me that most of the songs, like the good songs, he wrote, but it was actually his bandmate and his friends that wrote them. Um. Yes, he just like lied about things all the time. Um. And there was another time as well where it was really icy, and I fell over in the road. I actually broke a rib and I was in a lot of pain for a few days and he was like there's nothing wrong with you you're fine you're just being dramatic meh, meh. and um I was literally like in agony walking and um I asked him if he could like carry me across the road and he was just like no I'm not doing that you're embarrassing um and then I went to the walking centre and it turned out I had actually broken a rib. And when I told him, he was like, what do you want me to do about it? I can't do anything, can I? Um, and I remember, you know, I just want people to know if, like, there was a lot of red flags that I missed. You know, especially the clinginess, saying he loved me before we got together. You know, he did spy on me. He went through my phone. He went through my Facebook at certain points as well. He cut me off from everybody, essentially, um, to isolate me and get me alone. He financially abused me, emotionally abused me, mentally and physically abused me. Um, the only thing he didn't do was sexually abuse me. But... You know, it's <sighs> it's led to good things in my life. So in some ways I have to be grateful for that. But I will always hate him for what he did to me and to others. And the thing is now he has a child. A little girl with his current partner. And I just pray. I hope to God he isn't abusive to her in any way. Because that would just break my heart. You know. It really would break my heart. But the point is. 
you know, even though I went through these bad things, it led to who I am now. It led me to being on the twin flame journey with my partner, meeting the one, you know, which is obviously my partner. But um, I had to go all through all these things to be who I am today, to be where I am today. And I just want everyone to know that if you're going through that, that you're not alone, that there are people there who will talk to you, that will help you. Sometimes you just need someone from the outside to give you a different perspective that I wish I had at the time. I really wish that I had that. Um, and that it can happen to anyone. You know, it can happen to anyone. Anyone can be abused, you know, but did you tend to go for people who have vulnerabilities? They'll play on that vulnerability, they'll manipulate it, they'll manipulate you, they'll make you feel low. And it can happen to men as well as women. It really can, but just know that you're worth more than that. They're not the horrible, the, you know, he used to call me a slag and a whore and a slut and all this stuff and just know that you're worth more than what they perceive you to be and you're not alone and if you're feeling trapped you can contact me speak to me I know I help you and I know this is different from what I usually do but I just want people to know that I'm a survivor and you can be too you don't need to become a victim you can become a survivor and I know that my guides have led me on this path so I can help other people who've been through what I've been through I mean I've been through child abuse child sexual abuse I've been raped you know I've been through quite a few different things. But it was really that, that that triggered it off. And I remember I would get panic attacks every day and I could hear other people's thoughts and feel what other people were feeling and I thought I was going mad and I was like, why is this happening to me? What what am I going through? You know, but obviously now I realise what it was. And I'm grateful because I wouldn't change anything because of what it's taught me. And, you know, people often come in spiritual awakenings after a traumatic event. Um, because, you know, you become broken open in some respects and you have a mission to help other people. You know, we choose this life before we're born. We sign a soul contract. We choose this. And I know that sounds awful, but we do. To teach lessons. To correct karma. To balance out the universe. And... I just hope that if he ever sees this video, I want you to know that you have made me stronger. I hated you for a long time. I don't hate you now, but I just wish that you fixed yourself for your child, for your daughter. And that you realize where you went wrong and you don't repeat the same mistakes again. And I and your girlfriend and your other exes are worth 10,000 times what you are. And I pray to God your daughter never sees you doing those things to anybody. Anyway, guys, it's like been over an hour of me just talking, talking, talking away. But, you know... 
I would say that if you've been through if you've been through something traumatic and you start hearing voices and picking up on other people's feelings and seeing shadows it's very possible you're going through some kind of awakening um but if you feel like you need some kind of mental help then please do seek it you know therapy counseling is extremely beneficial regardless of the circumstances um but just know that you're not alone that you're you're supported and you're loved and you always have a friend in me whoever finds this video I really hope that this this helps you know and if there's anything that's happened to you and you don't know if it's abuse or not and it sounds similar to anything I've detailed here then please know that take this as your sign to leave get yourself out while you can because 70% of domestic violence situations end up in murder or serious bodily harm and I don't want that to happen to anybody I was lucky that mine wasn't worse I'm not downplaying what happened to me but it could have been worse and I'm glad I got out when I did anyway guys a little bit of a somber video tonight but i just wanted to kind of get that out there and i hope that this helps somebody um but thank you guys um i'd love to hear from from all of you and take care bye